Hey guys, welcome to Metal. So in this video, we are going to look at the techniques of local anesthesia. So this is an important aspect of local anesthesia. Make sure to watch the video till the end. So before this, you can watch our previous videos on the local anesthesia where we have discussed about the classification, mechanism of action, adverse effects and pharmacological actions. So moving on to the techniques of local anesthesia, we will begin with the surface anesthesia. So what is surface anesthesia? For the surface anesthesia, we use tetracaine 2%, percent lignocaine 2 to 10% and benzocaine 1 to 2%. So we can either use it as solution, ointment, gel, jelly, cream or spray. So these are all the different uh, techniques that is a solution, ointment, gel, jelly, cream or spray. And we can use tetracaine 2%, percent lignocaine 2 to 10% and benzocaine 1 to 2%. And this surface anesthesia can be applied on the abraded skin, mucous membranes of the nose, mouth, eyes, throat, upper respiratory tract, as well as the urethra. And uh, what do you use? We can also use adrenaline along with this, uh, along with these local anesthetics to prolong the duration of the action. And also we can also use eutetic mixture of local anesthetics for the intact skin. So the first route is the surface anesthesia. We use tetracaine, lignocaine and benzocaine in the given percentages. We can use it either as a solution, ointment, jelly, cream or spray. It can be applied on the abraded skin, mucous membranes of the nose, mouth, eyes, throat, upper respiratory tract and urethra. We can also use along with it adrenaline or eutetic mixture of local anesthetics. Moving on to the next one that is the infiltration anesthesia. So here the local anesthesia is directly injected into the tissues. So in the infiltration anesthesia, we are directly injecting the local anesthesia into the given tissues that to be operated, thus blocking the sensory nerve endings of the given organ. So what do we use? We again use lignocaine, procaine and rupivacaine. In these percentages, lignocaine 0.5 to 1%, procaine 0.5 to 1%, rupivacaine 0.125 to 1.25 percentage. And also we can combine the adrenaline with them with the ratio of 1 is to 50,000 or 1 is to 1 is to 50,000 up to 1 is to 2.5 lakh. So we can use this for the infiltration anesthesia. And where do we apply this infiltration anesthesia? We can apply in the abscess drainage, excision of the small swellings such as lipoma. Then we can also use it for suturing of the cut wounds as well. So these are all the applications of the infiltration anesthesia. Uh, that the only thing is that large amount of drug is required for small area of anesthesia even if the anesthesia is a small area we require large amounts of the drug here so this is about the infiltration anesthesia moving on to the conduction block so conduction block is very very important listen to it very carefully the first one is called as the field block in the field block it is used in case of minute procedures of the scalp anterior abdominal wall upper limb as well as the lower limb so we can use field block in these conditions where we will inject the local anesthetic subcutaneously to anesthetize the given area so this is about the field block used only for the minor procedures of the scalp anterior abdominal wall upper limb and lower limb in this we will inject the local anesthetic subcutaneously to anesthetize the given particular area moving on to the next important thing that is the nerve block in this uh, the local anesthetic is given very close to and around the peripheral nerve or the nerve plexus thus producing larger areas of anesthesia so in this we are not giving it a particular area we will give it around the uh, peripheral nerves or the nerve ending so that entire area supplying, supplied by that nerve is completely uh, anesthetized so we can use this for the brachial plexus block for the upper limb cervical plexus block for the surgery of necks intercostal nerve block for the anterior abdominal wall surgery as well as the sciatic and femoral nerve block so these are all the nerve blocks we can give we have the brachial plexus block cervical plexus block intercostal nerve block sciatic and femoral nerve block moving on to the next important thing that is the spinal anesthesia so spinal anesthesia here the injection of the local anesthetic is given in the subarachnoid space that is that is where the spinal roots are present and there the spinal roots are block so we will inject the local anesthetic in the subarachnoid space and from there the spinal roots are completely blocked so we can use lignocaine either 1.5 to 5 percent we can use tetracaine 0.25 to 0.5 percent we can use bupivacaine 0.5 to 0.75 percentage and these are to be used for surgery on the lower limbs lower abdomen perineum as well as the caesarean section so this is an important thing that is the spinal anesthesia now what are the advantages of the spinal anesthesia here there is no loss of consciousness of the patient consciousness is present in the patient there is good muscle relaxation as well as there is good analgesia 
then what are the complications of spinal anesthesia we have the patient may present with headache hypotension respiratory paralysis septic meningitis as well as the post op urinary retention so these are all the complications the patient may present with that is the headache hypotension respiratory paralysis septic meningitis as well as the post operative urinary retention then what are the contraindications of the spinal anesthesia these are not to be used in the young children so they may not be cooperative not to be used in the young children as well as they are uh, not to be used in the in case of vertebral abnormalities if there is sepsis in the lumbar puncture site and also if the patient is having hypotension or shock so these are all the absolute contraindications for the spinal anesthesia not to be used in the young children if there are any vertebral abnormalities if there is sepsis in the lumbar puncture site as well as if there is hypotension and shock moving on to the next thing that is the epidural anesthesia in the epidural anesthesia the local anesthetic is injected into the epidural space so it might be injected in thoracic lumbar or sacral canal so local anesthetic is injected into the epidural space so we can also use a lignocaine and bupivacaine and it is also safer but it is comparatively more difficult than the spinal anesthesia so what we use here there is slower onset of action thus larger amount of the drug is required we, keep, we require larger amount of drug and also there is slower onset of action so this epidural anesthesia is particularly used in the obstetrics during the labor part so this is also important moving on to the next one that is the intravenous regional anesthesia it's also called as the BS block here we'll inject it into vein of the limb and finally uploaded by the tourniquet so we have the intravenous regional anesthesia it's also called as the BS block we will inject the anesthesia into the vein of the limb followed by occlusion by the tourniquet so finally we'll end this lecture with the important thought that is the the first step to improve the way you feel is to become more aware of the emotions you experience on a regular basis. So I'm going to repeat it again. The first step to improve the way you feel is to become more aware of the emotions you experience on a regular basis. This is from the book Master Your Emotions. So I thought you might be able, I thought you must hear this. So again, thank you guys. Thank you for watching video till the end. Make sure to subscribe and hit the like button and share this to your other friends who want to learn more about the pharmacology part. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.